The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grand Pappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. Anything spicy in the local news, Luke? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what it says here. Um, it is rumored that Tom Lovell will be elected president of the Fresh Peach Advisory Board this year. Your friendly farmer thinks that Tom will make a peach of a president. Ha, ha. <laughs> What's it? Ha, ha. For? Well, I think that's to show that Mr. Friendly Farmer was laughing when he wrote that. <laughs> that's pretty good, this fella. He said, you know, I had a hankering to be a newspaper man once, but it's kind of hard to fit in if you can't read or write. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll get it, sugar babe. It's Ben Woodruff from your lodge. By the time you get it, he'll be gone. The exalted mummy coming to see us? <laughs> ben! <Hey>. Well... <laughs> Evening, Luke. Glad to see you, Ben. Amos, I hope I'm not interrupting your supper. Oh, no, we finished a long time ago. As a matter of fact, I'm just in the kitchen putting up some preserves. Will you excuse me? Oh, of course, of course. Got some good reports on your lodge picnic committee, Amos. You're doing a real fine job. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, I did have a little tussle about the olives with O'Brien, but I didn't let him have his way. You were switching to green ones. Yeah. <laughs> well, say, hey, come on, sit still down. Yeah. What brings you way out here, Ben? Well, I'm trying to line up a volunteer to help out Miss Mulebach. Oh, that's the lady that works in the lodge office, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one. You see, problems come up concerning the lodge that she can't handle. Important decisions, uh, inside matters that only lodge members would understand. Yeah, well, I can see where she might run into a snag now and again. <laughs> I'm trying to find somebody to... Help her out a couple nights a week, sort of get her over the rough spots, oh. and uh, you'd make an ideal man for the job if you'd do it, Luke. Well, I'd like to, Ben, but but you see, I'm, I'm you pretty well. Man, you need to you in a good job. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute, Grandpa. Ben, you see, I'm a married man, and well, you know how it is. I work hard all day, and I kind of like to be with my wife in the evenings. And, and now, Luke, just a minute. That ain't good, large thinking. There's a job to do, you know. Seems like all the members have something else to do. What do you mean, all the members? Nobody asked me, and I'm a member in good standing. Well, I I didn't think about you, Amos. You're so darn busy already. You're head of the picnic committee. Uh, no, I couldn't let you take on more work. Uh-uh. That ain't no way to think, Ben. There's a job to be done, ain't there? Well, yes. Then I'll find time to do it. <laughs> well, I can't let you do it, Amos. No more talk, Ben. You got yourself a volunteer. Maybe this will set a good example for them people who think they're such loyal members of the Mystic Nile Lodge. <laughs> now, look, Grandpa, it's easy for you to talk. You ain't married. You got nothing but time on your hands. Excuses, excuses. Nothing but no account excuses. Well, that's that. Sure is a great load off my mind. Yes, sir. <laughs> the whole membership owes you a vote of thanks, Amos. Glad to do it, Ben. Well, so long. <laughs> so long. Hurry along. I'm on the hospital visiting committee. Mert Schaefer's got the mumps. Well, I thought Hank Scott was on that committee. Well, he was until he visited Mert. Oh, hello. <laughs> so, uh, Amos, that's Tuesday and Thursday night at 6. Yeah, I'll be there, Ben. Good night again. Good night, Amos. <laughs> well, you sure made me look like some kind of a slacker in front of Ben. Well, these the thinkers and these the doers. And he's them that flaps the jaws, and he's them that flaps the muscles. Are you saying that I'm just a talker, Grandpa? You picked your stall, son. Now you can back into it. <laughs> you got it upside down. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I'm stuck as usual. I simply cannot answer all of this mail about lodge affairs without a member being here to help me. Well, you can relax now. I've got a volunteer for you. 
Mr. Amos McCoy, a wonderful man. Oh, what a relief. I just thought I couldn't stand it another minute. I could feel the tension all through here, all around my eyes, down the back of my neck, clear down to the floor. I know. Well, Mr. McCoy said he'd be here this evening. Well, there's a lot of letters he can read here. All this work that's been stacking up here for just for days. Well, he'll take care of that. A very conscientious man. Come in. Well, evening. Hello, Amos. I'm sorry I'm a bit late. I didn't want to miss the frost warnings on the radio. <laughs> you know, it's wonderful the way that fella does it. Almost makes you look forward to a freeze. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amos, I'd like for you to meet Miss Muehlbach. She's the lady you'll be helping. It's a great pleasure to know you, Mr. McCoy. Thank you, ma'am. The pleasure goes both ways. <laughs> Mr. McCoy is one of our more helpful members. The whole lodge appreciates it. Oh, that's only fitting, Ben. Well, Amos, Miss Muehlbach will show you your duties. I've got to get these shirts over to Mert Schaefer over at the hospital. Oh, how's he coming along with the monks? Fine, fine. Had to let his collars out a little. <laughs> I was just thinking, this lodge would have to go a long way before they'd find a hard-working member like you. Oh, ain't nothing any red-blooded mummy wouldn't do. <laughs> Certainly gives a lot of himself to you people of the Nile. <laughs> well, shall we get started? Oh, I'm a rare yes. Well, you take Mr. Woodruff's desk right over here. Now, here are some requests that have come in wanting to know about the facilities of the lodge hall. Now, here's an example of a letter. It says, Dear Sirs, the Kindness Cat Club requests the use of the Lodge Hall for a cat show on May the 2nd. Now, what should I tell them, Mr. McCoy? We got anything else going on, then? No, it's clear. Then tell them they can use it for nothing. For nothing, Mr. McCoy? Yeah, we got mice here. <laughs> Very well, I'll tell them that. Well, now that you know the kind of requests that are coming in, uh, let's speed things up a bit. Huh? Yeah, I'm all for getting the work done. All right, now you just read these letters, and here's a stamp, and you can stamp the ones that you approve of. Yeah. <laughs> read them. Why, yes. Is there something wrong? You seem puzzled. Well, you would be too if you, if you got a cinder in your eye and it was written to be read. <laughs> Smart. Oh, I'll get a hanky. <laughs> oh, I know just how that feels. Goes right in your eye, through your ear, down to your shoulders, and out your fingertips, doesn't it? All of that. Yeah. Here, now, just lean back here and let me see. <laughs> you might not be able to see it. Hold still now. Hold still. Ah! I got it. You did? Well, your eyelashes came loose. Genius, so you did. <laughs> you know, it's a fact I've been noted for weak eyelashes. They fall in my eyes right and left. <laughs> now, maybe if you, if you let me take the hanky, maybe I can hold it over there. You can read them in the letters, can't you? Now, let me look at that eye. Let me look at it. There's nothing wrong with that eye. Now, you're teasing me, Mr. McCoy. Come on now. Back to work. Back to work. <laughs> What's the matter? Something wrong? Oh, no. But I noticed that you read the letter on the pink stationery, and it didn't seem to tickle you as it did me. <laughs> Michael's playing checkers. Oh, is it important? Oh, we can call George and Grandpa will be here in about ten minutes. No, no, no. It's not that important. I'll just leave these off. Amos okayed a lot of letters last night. <laughs> I'm afraid he made a few mistakes. <laughs> I uh, made some notes on the ones he did wrong. I guess he read them too fast. Read them? <laughs> oh, we'll make 
make sure that Grandpa gets these, Mr. Woodruff. Well, that's fine, Kate, and thank you. Just have him read them over and get them correct. It's important Miss Muehlbach have them typed up for tomorrow night. <laughs> you be, he'll get them read. <laughs> well, thank you, Luke. I've got to go. Busy, busy, busy. Go, go, go. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Luke, this is terrible. Grandpa pretending he can read. No, I don't understand it. Here, let me see what Ben wrote on the letter. Here's one. Here, this one here. I don't think it's wise to use the lodge hall for a cat show and a dog show on the same day. Did Grandpa answer a letter? Oh, don't ask me. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That explains it. Look there. He had a rubber stamp. He just stamped it approved. How could he possibly know what he was stamping? Yeah, well, that's the trouble. He didn't. Uh... Oh, wait a minute. Listen to this one. Amos, I don't think you read these too carefully. You got the lodge booked to march in three different parades in three different towns at the same time. <laughs> you know the lodge doesn't march in any parade. It's against our rules. <laughs> How long Grandpa thinks he can get away with this? <laughs> I played five games of checkers with George, and I beat four of them. And I'd have beat the fifth one, only I had one king down here that I never know to had. And that foxy old George, he just sat there puffing his pipe, <laughs> and he covered up the king with a cloud of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the matter, you two? Nothing. Uh, oh, uh, Ben Woodruff dropped these off for you. What are they? Uh, read them. Find out. Oh, now, come, Luke. You know better than that. <laughs> well, sure, we do, Grandpa, but it appears like you don't. Oh, uh, did you enjoy reading them letters about the parades? Oh, oh are you going to have a parade, are they? <laughs> oh, it's like parades. Well, then you're in for the time of your life, Grandpa, because the lodge is going to be marching in three of them. <laughs> what? Yeah, and they're going to do the biggest march and trick in the whole world, too. They're going to be marching in three different cities at the same time. Well, who said so? You did, Grandpa. Right here in these letters. Grandpa, how could you do that? Giving answers to questions before you even knew what the questions were. Well, what was I going to do? Sit there like a great big ninny and admit to that female that I can't read? Now, look. Grandpa, we know you was in a predicament, and it's nice of you to try to help out, but, well, there's no use pretending no more. You just got to get out of the job. Get out? I just got in. <laughs> I'm telling Ben about all them members that don't want to help. I'm in a trap, I tell you. I'm trapped just like a beetle in a washbowl. <laughs> Grandpa, you can't keep fooling them. It, it ain't honest. The only thing to do is to tell the truth. Just go to Ben and well, tell him you can't read. Are you out of your senses? Why, the, I'd be the laughing stock of the whole lodge. Would it get around? Before you know it, the whole valley would be laughing at me. And they'd come and they'd put a sign outside the house here saying, this is the home of Eagle and Amos. <laughs> no, sir. I ain't a telling no one. Now, come on. Let's get them letters took care of. You and Kate can read them to me. Well, uh, all right. All right, Grandpa, we'll read them to you. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, on one condition. What's that? You quit the job. Well, now, if that ain't the sneakiest thing I ever hit her. Well, I ain't a quitting. And as far as you two concerned, you can forget it. I'll get somebody else to help me. Yeah, I wonder what it'd be like to have a normal grandpa. A nice old man that just plays checkers and chews tobacco and scratches himself once in a while. <laughs> wandering around in the middle of the night. Oh, for Pete's sake, we thought you was a burglar. Grandpa, you give us an awful fright. Well, can a man do no thinking at night without being took for a burglar? Yeah, you know, he's still trying to figure out them letters, huh, Grandpa? Yeah, and they're sticking in my craw like a, a stack of cold pancakes. Yeah, well. <laughs> Look, Sugar, it's going to be mighty rough on all of us if Grandpa don't get to bed, because he's going to be tromping on that loose board all night. Well, I guess there's no use fighting him. 
All right, Grandpa. Luke and me will help you with the letters in the morning. <laughs> but just this once. I know you wouldn't fail me. And I'll try to get some shut eye, will you? Yeah. Good night, Grandpa. Good night. Thank you. Sure lucky I never nailed that down. <laughs> about the dog show? Mm, yes, uh, we put a note right on the side there. You yeah, see, that says, don't have a dog and cat show on the same day. <laughs> you do one about the parade and about my ideas about the uniform and how the newspapers write up about the lodge and all that stuff? Yeah, I give them your whole sales talk. Well, I guess that about takes care of everything. Much obliged, you kids, for helping. Uh, wait a minute, Grandpa. Uh, there's one more letter. What's that? It's a letter from you to Ben Woodruff, personal. What do you mean? Yeah, I'll read it to you. Dear Ben, I'm sorry to have to write this to you, but I'm afraid I have to change my mind about working those two nights a week for the lodge. I looked around the farm and I found a lot of things that needed fixing. Things that ought to be done in the evening hours. Now, what ought to... Let him finish, Grandpa. I'm already doing a lot for the lodge with the picnic planning and all. So I'd be obliged if you'd get somebody else to work nights with Miss Muehlbach. Yours very truly, Amos McCoy. Why ain't you gonna send that letter? That's a whistling letter. Why ain't you gonna send it? Grandpa, if you can think of a better excuse than this, we'll write it for you. Any excuse is whistling, and I don't believe in it. Grandpa, you got no other choice. Luke and me fix these letters, but we're not gonna do it again. Grandpa, you just gotta quit. You're gonna get yourself and the lodge deeper and deeper in trouble. All right, so be it. So be it. I guess a man can hide a lot of things he ain't got, except in the education. But one thing for me to do is to go into town tonight and tell Ben Woodruff that I'm just an ignorant old man and can't read or write. Before you know it, the lodge will know I can't read, and then it'll be all over town. And the next thing you know, there'll be a cancel in my newspaper subscription. <laughs> I'm going to be right beside you when you tell him. And if he makes fun of you or even so much as snickers at you, I'm going to let him have it. Well, now, that's mighty thoughtful of you, but you better wait out here. I got into this myself without no help, and I guess I'm going to have to get out the same way. Can't think of no other word to use instead of ignorance, except in... Ignorance. Well, hello, Amos. That is all fixed? Hello, Ben. Yep. That's fine, fine. Yeah. Uh, ben, look, I don't want to beat around the bush or nothing, but I got something I got to tell you. you. Say here you're in favor of parades for the lodge. What I wanted to say was... Well, I can see you're enthused about the idea of parades, but, you know, the lodge has a rule against them. Good God, done it, Ben. You got a one-track mind or something? I'm trying to tell you something. All right, Amos. I'm listening. Tell me why the lodge should march in parades. Give me your reason. <laughs> parades? Well, he, he just gives the members new life. He, he sort of gives them a little get up and go. <laughs> Everybody likes parades, Ben. You know that. And it keeps the kids and the grown-ups off in the streets. <laughs> true. Well, you said yourself you wanted some new blood in the lodge. Well, this is the way to get it. With music and marching in the sun and shining on the on the band instruments, you see. Why, you just get all the young folks just to crowd me in. You never looked at it that way. Why, Ben, can't you hear, can't you hear the drums, Ben? Just hear the drums. <laughs> and the pickles. Trombones. <laughs> That's beautiful. Amos, that's a good idea. <laughs> of course it's good. All my ideas is good. Don't that old lodge rule against parades? We'll set up a parade committee and... 
Amos, how'd you like to be the head of it? With your enthusiasm, you'd be a natural. No, ben, now, don't no. worry about this desk job. We'll get somebody else to help Miss Muehlbach. You will? Oh, well, Bill. We want to free you from all this paperwork so you can be our grand marshal. How about it, Amos? Would you take over the parade committee? Well, Ben, I figure it's my duty, my bounden duty. Great, great. <laughs> Oh, Miss Muehlbach, I do. No, I'm just waiting for my grandpa. He's talking to Mr. Woodruff. How have you been? Oh, pretty good. I haven't been well at all. You know how it is when you breathe? Well, yeah. Uh... In and out, like, you know. Well, I breathe in just fine, but nothing seems to come out. Seems like I'm always full of air. Have you seen a doctor? Oh, yes, three of them. They all say it's my imagination. A lot they know. Well, I have to go and visit my sister now. She's always complaining. There's nothing really wrong with her. She's a hypochondriac. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> Wait till I tell the members that. Now, now look at here, Ben. There ain't no need to laugh at Grandpa. Just because he can't... Hold on, Lou. Don't upset the apple cart. Everything's going fine. Just appointed Amos to a new and bigger job. Yeah, bigger job? More letter reading? Oh, he's too valuable for letter reading. He's going to be Grand Marshal of our new Lodge Parading Unit. <laughs>